Last time you're going to see me, Ellen DeGeneres to disappear after Netflix special. So Ellen DeGeneres has finally heeded, has finally listened to Tim Dillon. Continued in her comedy routine that she became the most hated person in America. She was not. She was not. No one really cared. She was just around for too long. Here's the thing. You can't be around forever. It, people get sick of you. There is a natural, uh, you know, aversion that people have to, like, inevitability. You know, that's one of the reasons people say Hillary Clinton lost. She was I inevitable. People just felt like something was being shoved down their throat every moment. Ellen DeGeneres was on television forever. In every decade, Ellen DeGeneres pretty much was around. And she had her show for a really long time. And I think towards the end of it, instead of bowing out gracefully, they had to kind of force her out. And she decided that she will disappear from the limelight. She will disappear from celebrity culture. She will disappear from public. And she will just go somewhere, enjoy her riches, you know, and live life, be merry, play around with her dogs and her wife and be chill. Finally, she listened to Tim Dillon. Finally. Article Kershaw Salon. Ellen DeGeneres is bowing out from this decades-long comedy career, capping off a mixed legacy as a trailblazing queer pioneer and a bad boss. This is the last time you're going to see me. After my Netflix special, I'm done. She said at a July stand-up show in San Francisco, according to SF Gate. The retirement announcement comes after fans asked her whether they could expect to see her on the stage or on, uh, on film on stage anytime soon. The comedian doubled down when asked if she would reprise her role as Dory in Pixar's Finding Nemo. No, I'm going bye-bye, remember? The 33-time day Daytime Emmy Award winner said. DeGeneres is currently on a national tour titled Ellen's Last Stand-Up has kept a low profile for the past like, two years. To be fair, this is a good thing. I've realized as well in my raving years that sometimes the best thing in life is to leave the party before the party leaves you. It really is important to do so. But it's less about what I've gone through. Focus more on these type of people. I've never really understood why people who have experienced crazy genre defying success are not able to recognize when the wind is changing and just bow out because you can decide when you bow out because you have you know made more money than god you've been around for fucking ever but you see the winds are changing the sentiment around you is changing it's better to just duck out gracefully than trying to fight against and convince people that you're not that bad of a person because the main problem that energy generous suffered from unfortunately isn't that she's a bad boss is that she was being fake that was her problem it wasn't that she might be a bitch behind the scenes she might be a tyrant she might be a bully that isn't that much that isn't that big of a deal you know it's entertainment industry there's always assholes in this industry you have to just work for it if you want to get anywhere it is what it is the issue was that she was fake she was presenting an image of being bubbly and nice and cuddly and dancing and you know, she was kind of like a, a human safe space in a way. But then when the news came out or when the stories came out about her being horrible behind the scenes, it shattered everybody's idea of who she was. And she was unable to put those pieces back together. And once people started looking at her like that, it was it was over, really, for that version of Ellen DeGeneres. Now, if she wants to, she could easily come back out in public and be, okay, I am this real, raw person. But it's a bit late now. You've built an entire persona of being like bubbly and nice and warm. Now everybody knows you're a bit of a, an arsehole behind the scenes. It's going to be hard for them to kind of, you know, wrangle those two things and be okay with you coming back on screen or be fans of you flat out. Um, and obviously in her business, Brendan always says he's in the business of, Brendan will sometimes say he's in the business of likability. But if you're on mainstream TV, you are definitely on the business of likability. There's not a lot of mainstream TV people who are like, I, I can only think of like news anchors and stuff. And that's a whole different thing. But if you're in like the entertainment industry, you kind of have to be liked, Mo you know, majority. The majority of people, they have to like you. And the fact that the majority of people are kind of maybe, you know, a little bit 
unsure of her after the stories leaked about her, um, you know, workplace environment or the workplace culture over there at her show, it was a wrap. But it took her a while to get here. She was kind of fighting against it, trying to stay around, trying to stay relevant. And it's just like, bro, man, just bow out gracefully. It's not that deep. You're not missing out much. You've done everything. There's not much else to do. Just leave it alone. Like, just put your hands up and just back away. It's okay. It's okay. You had a good run. People enjoyed what you did. Obviously, it didn't end the way you wanted to end. But now you get the chance to walk away. Walk away while you can. Because the last thing you want, and this always happens when people get cancelled. I always feel like when people get cancelled, especially people that people, especially people that are not likable, I always feel like there's always somebody out there holding a story. So if she tries to, there's always a danger. If she tries to keep herself relevant and keep herself in the conversation, there's always a danger that someone's going to come out with a crazy story that's going to hurt more than the other ones. Or it's going to be another, you know, another fucking thing to beat her down with and then it's going to be hard to come back from that. So you're better off just leaving the stories that are out there at the moment, you know, and just kind of d disappearing. Because before I even read this article, I'm not going to lie, I even... I forgot she disappeared or whatever happened. I wasn't even, she wasn't in the front of my mind at all. So the last thing you want is for people to start remembering, oh yeah, she did that to me. She did this to me. So you're better off bowing out gracefully and just leaving it there. It's not a bad thing. It really isn't. I wish more people would do it. Um, I've always said, I think Brian Callen should do it. I don't understand why Brian Callen's still around, like shucking and driving, you know? It doesn't really make any sense. Like you've had a great run. You had a stupendous run. You should probably bow out gracefully and just enjoy your riches now. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your free time, you know, and just chill. There's no need to be battling fucking Matt Rife on the timeline for the attention of people. It just doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? It's like there should be an end point. But I guess some people also, to be fair to these people, some of them also love the work. They love the hustle. They love, you know, jumping in the car, heading to the studio, grabbing a coffee, the little chat with the makeup people, maybe a little flirt with somebody that works behind it. You know, whatever. They enjoy the whole lifestyle around it. So maybe once you take that away, there's nothing much to do. And probably similar to like, you know, in all things in life, you'd imagine the very poor and the very rich are very similar in that they get bored very easily. When you're poor, you get bored and you end up in the madness because you're bored, you've got nothing to do. And when you're rich, you've got all the money in the world, but you've probably done everything and you're still bored. So, you know, to keep yourself occupied, you just work a lot. Um, and obviously, the older you get too, you run out of friends and stuff, or friends die or pass away and stuff or move away. Um, so work does really become your life, work or family, really. So it's maybe understandable why they just don't let go. They just hang on for dear life until the end. But I've never got that. Me personally, I've always been of the idea of like, you know, especially those type of entertainment careers, they have a they have a shelf, they have a shelf space, they have a, they have a time, you know? You, you enjoy it at the time, you smash it, you bang it out, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it may be, and then you, you duck. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't get cancelled. The, the goal is not to get cancelled. The goal is to bow out before you get cancelled. That's what I would say. Um, and I mean cancelled like because of something you, mad you did or because they cancelled your actual TV show. But, you know, maybe the limelight is just too addictive. Um, but it's good to hear that she is bowing out gracefully now. It's good to hear she's bowing out gracefully now.